Hi besties, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Kelly, if you haven't seen me before, I'll be chatting about creating a morning routine that you can actually stick to, which tons of you have asked me about on TikTok. Wow, that's, that's a great question. And I feel like YouTube gives it the proper format. We've all been there, where at like 9 p.m. the night before, we decide that we're gonna revamp our morning routine. You create this huge list of everything that you're gonna be doing in the morning. You're gonna wake up at 6 a.m., you're gonna do a workout, you're gonna do all of this stuff, and then the next morning rolls around, you hit snooze a dozen times, and none of that actually ends up happening. Or maybe you carry on with that morning routine for a couple of days, and then you fall off track, and it never really makes it back. So today we're gonna to be chatting ways to avoid that, different strategies that are gonna help you build long lasting habits, and a couple of the reasons why I feel like people are really falling off of their morning routines and how we can fix that. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing that I feel like is really important when you're trying to create a morning routine or any kind of routine really, for that matter, is to understand the science behind creating good habits. The core of a habit is just your body's response to a cue. So you have a cue, a craving, a response, and a reward. An example of a cue may be that you wake up feeling groggy and you wanna feel more awake. So that is your craving, is to feel more awake. Your response would be to drink a cup of coffee, and the reward is that you've satisfied that craving to feel more awake, and then your body is going to associate being awake with drinking coffee. And so that might be how you build a habit of drinking coffee in the morning. There are a few things to consider if you're looking to create a healthy habit. So one example of this may be creating a new workout habit. When you're creating a new habit, you want it to be obvious, easy, attractive, and satisfying. If you're looking to get into home workouts, you might lay out your yoga mat the night before, everything is ready to go, you have your water bottle, your workout clothes, etc. It becomes a lot more attractive when you don't really have to think about it because it's so easy. The reason that you want to make your new habits easier is because it avoids the friction of trying to start something new. Well, that covers how we can create healthier habits that are new habits, but what about the unhealthy habits that you already have that maybe you're trying to break in order to embrace your new healthier habits? You would basically want to do the complete opposite of what you're doing for your healthy habits. So rather than making it easy and more attractive to do and removing that friction, you wanna make it more difficult, less attractive, and increase the level of friction that it takes for you to do that. So one example of this may be that you find yourself getting on your phone a lot in the morning, right when you wake up. One way that you could make getting on your phone more difficult in the morning is to charge your phone in a different room, to use a real alarm clock instead of using your phone as an alarm clock or keep your phone just completely across the room, but not in the same location as your alarm clock. So that way you don't have that notification, you don't have the cue, and you're less likely to have the craving to respond to that cue. Okay, so that pretty much covers all about the basics of the science behind creating new habits. If you wanna learn more about creating new healthy habits or more about the science behind habits in general, I will leave a link in the description box to both Atomic Habits and The Power of Habit, as well as a couple of free articles. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is observe our existing habits. And you may be thinking, I don't actually have any habits because personally, that's really how I felt. I felt like I didn't have existing habits, but that's not true. You likely have something that you do every morning. One for me was scrolling on my phone for like an hour. Um, I'm still occasionally guilty of that. Keep note of those habits and how they make you feel because this is gonna help you identify the habits that you wanna keep and the habits that you wanna get rid of. Then you may find that you have coffee in the morning and coffee makes you feel good. It's kind of a morning moment to relax. Then maybe that's something that you wanna keep in your morning routine. In order to adopt our new habits, we're gonna add those on to a habit that you already have, that you're already doing every day. Because by stacking it, you're gonna create more of a sequence of habits that's a little bit easier for you to keep track of. So one example may be that you wanna get better at doing your skincare routine in the morning. You do your skincare directly after brushing your teeth, which you're already doing every day. Maybe you put your skincare items right next to where you keep your toothbrush so that you automatically think about them as soon as you see it. It's creating different routines depending upon the time that you have and the energy that you have. So maybe you have some mornings where you have to go early, especially if you're like a college student um, your days may vary a little bit more 
So I think that it's equally important to give yourself different times or maybe you want to have a longer, more like drawn out morning routine on weekends and a little bit more of a tight schedule during the week. Um, so just being able to kind of have some flexibility in your schedule. And I also think that there's a difference between maybe having low energy and having low time. So if you're low time, low energy, maybe you wanna do like yoga and stretching in bed. And if you're low time but high energy, you might be okay with like a 10 minute hit workout so that you feel like you got a really great workout even though you didn't have a ton of time to do it your low energy maybe somebody else's high energy your high energy maybe somebody else's low energy etc but when you're creating these definitely pay attention to the fact that you're going to be able to adjust those movement can look different it might be a full one hour Pilates workout or it might be mat based at home or it could even be just stretching don't feel like it needs to look a certain way it just needs to be what you need to feel good by creating a system in which you have options so that you don't have to feel like you failed at completing your morning routine and you know that I created a system so that I could still get through what I feel like is important and necessary for me without necessarily having to go above and beyond depending upon how you're feeling, your energy levels, etc. is really important in my opinion for creating a system that's going to have more longevity than something that you think of late at night and then can't actually follow through on the next day. Okay besties, let's chat the mistakes that I see a lot that I think are making it harder for you to stick to a morning routine. Mistake number one, you're stuck on it being perfect every day. You need to let go of that expectation. I do feel that creating different routines based on your energy and time kind of helps alleviate that concern because you already have it kind of built into your mind of like, okay, if I don't feel great, if I don't have a lot of time, there's an alternative option that to me is still going to be satisfying and still going to get me in the right headspace to head into the day. It doesn't need to look like anybody else's. Maybe it looks completely different from what you've seen online. That's okay. It doesn't need to be any particular way. And just a friendly reminder, it's okay to skip steps if something doesn't feel good. Come back to it in the next day or a different day or when you're actually feeling like it's going to be what your body needs. Having the discipline to complete your morning routine every day and to make it a habit so that it's almost automatic is important, but I think it's equally important to give yourself space and patience when you're working on something like this because you're not going to wake up with a 12-step morning routine tomorrow. I was shocked, honey. I was in tears. Oh, and I know a lot of us feel that way or think that that is how it should happen, but in reality, you need to be a little bit easier on yourself if you're trying to like overhaul your morning to look completely different from what it looks like right now. Problem number two that I see all the time is that people have tried to copy and paste someone else's routine without acknowledging what might not be great about that. And the reason that I find this to be an issue is that people have created morning routines for themselves based on what they need, how they feel in the morning, their energy levels, etc. Like if you aren't really a morning person, Working out in the morning just may not be for you and you can still have daily movement in your routine, but maybe it's after work, after school. I feel like this happens a lot because of social media and there's always people sharing their morning routines. I definitely share mine on TikTok and Instagram, but when I'm sharing those, it's more as inspiration to you than something that I think you should just copy and paste because it isn't gonna be the same for everyone. The third mistake that I see a lot is that people aren't looking at a routine in terms of the function that it's going to serve in their own life. One example of this is people who don't like journaling trying to adopt journaling. Maybe you do need a way to process your thoughts in the morning, but maybe you do better creating a voice note to yourself and then forgetting about it. Try different things on, but don't be afraid to let go of something that isn't working for you, even if it's something that you see in every single morning routine you've ever watched. Okay, that wraps it up for today's video. I hope that you found that helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comment section. You can find more of my content on Instagram and TikTok. See you soon.